they have the little headbands. When you're really wanting to build a firm foundation in your relationship, you let your partner in fully. There's nothing that's off limits. There's nothing that is untouchable in your relationship. We made it to the park. <laughs> Don't make life harder for yourself. Go to God about it. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kendra Michelle. If you are new here, welcome to the vlog. You guys, today we're going to start the vlog off a little bit different. Um, because this was just on my heart and my spirit this morning. Today is Friday, November 15th. Um, and it was just in my spirit to just start the vlog off with prayer today. Dear Heavenly Father, you are awesome. You are amazing. You are all powerful. You are all knowing, Lord. You know every hair on our head, Lord God. You know the path that you have set for every person who is listening or who is watching this video, Lord God. I pray that you touch each and every family, Lord God. I pray that you restore faith that is lost, Lord. I pray that you will give people hope, Lord God. I pray that you will just touch the minds and the hearts of the person who is watching this, Lord God. Allow them to know that you are there, Lord God. Allow them to feel your presence, Lord God, whether they stand in need of something right now or if they are doing well, Lord God. I pray that they will know that you are there, that you are with them, that you will never leave them, Lord God. I pray for the ones who are standing in need of hope, Lord God, who are standing in need of a fresh faith, Lord God. I pray that you will grant them, grant that to them, Lord. Lord, I just ask right now that you be in the midst of everything that we do, Lord God. I pray that we will consider you in every move that we make, Lord God, everything that we say and how it impacts those around us, Lord God. I pray that we will speak to you and that we will go to you for direction, Lord God, in this time of uncertainty, Lord God, in our world and in our country, Lord God. I pray that all our cares will be cast upon you and that we will put our faith and our trust in you in all things, Lord God. We love you. We thank you. We know that you are here for anyone who is listening, who has lost faith, Lord God. I pray that you would just touch their heart right now. Allow them to see that you are with them, that you are there, that you hear their prayers, Lord God, that you hear them, that you see them, Lord. And I just pray that as we continue to go about our day, our week, and our month, Lord God, that we'll be careful to consider you and hear you and speak to you and come to you for everything, Lord God. I just thank you for protection. I thank you for protecting our children. I thank you for protecting our homes. I pray that you give us wisdom in everything that we do. And I just thank you and praise you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So something that I was thinking about this morning, like as I was doing my devotional and having my quiet time is, you know how we go about life and we call on God when something like bad happens or if we're scared, sometimes we don't call on God at all. But a lot of times people will pray about things. And if God's not moving fast enough, we kind of like move in our own, on our own accord. And it's hard to have faith. Like, Let's just be honest. It's hard to just trust God and leave it up to him. Like, especially when in your mind, you think you have the answers at the time, because a lot of times we don't bring God in until we exhaust everything that we know to do. Or if we're making a decision where we think like, I don't need to bring God in this. Like, say for instance, like choosing your partner or dating or, you know, people don't pray some people probably do, but I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't pray about every single date they go on or whatever. But my thought today was just like, if God made us and he already knows the path that he planned for us because he has planned that path. And, but he gives us free will to, to do the things that we feel like is necessary. But why isn't it a no-brainer to just follow God's path if we know that in the end, like he made the plan? You know, it's just like, if someone has the answers, like why wouldn't you go to that person to learn? Like, I just feel like a lot of times we go, people go about life 
and they look up and they're like, how did I get here? And it's like, did you ever consider God in the decisions that you made? Or did you just make these decisions based off upon what you wanted to do? And then at the end, you're crying and asking God, where were you? But you never invited him in. Like you never asked him if you should be doing this. You just kind of like made your own decisions. You, you know, just flying by life, doing whatever you want to do. And then when you end up in a sticky situation, it's like, Lord, help me. And God, thank God he's merciful and he gives us grace to come to him about anything. But I just feel like, why not just go to him first? I don't know. That's just kind of something that was just like on my mind this morning. Like, why do we make things hard for ourselves? Like, why don't we just consider him first? Why don't we just come to him first and talk to him about the decisions that we're making? Like a lot of times we make these, oh, sorry if y'all can hear my stomach. I am so hungry. But a lot of times we just make these real life decisions on our own. We don't even ask God, is this something that we should be doing? Or how will, how should I go about this? Like, you know, I guess the message today is don't make life harder for yourself. Go to God about it. Ask him first before you make the decision. Don't come back after and say, Lord, how did I get here? You get what I'm saying? Whether that is um, in a friendship, in a business deal, um, buying a car, buying a house, going on a trip, like literally anything. We were supposed to pray about everything. So whenever you're making a decision about something, especially if you're unsure of the decision, go to God first and ask him to speak to you, show you the way, show you the path, especially when it comes to like relationships. I feel like because just because I hear so much about relationships currently, I'm just like, you guys, you can save yourself a whole lot of drama, a whole lot of extraness if you just go to God first. And some stuff is common sense. Like, would you would you think that God would want this for you? Would you think that God would want you to be treated like this? Like, would you think that God would want you to take this path this way? You know? I don't know. That was just something that was on my heart this morning. But I just say all that to say, trust God. Talk to him. He is there. He is listening. He wants you to come to him. He wants to direct you. And... A lot of times the path that he set for us is not easy and we think that we have an easier way to do it or we have a better way of doing it. But in the end, it's like if somebody wrote the map for how you are to get somewhere, why would you say, I'm not going to go that way? I'm going to I'm gonna take a shortcut. Man, this person made the map. Like they made the course that you're supposed to take. You could take a shortcut and end up in a ditch. Like, why wouldn't you just follow the path that was already created by the person who created the destination that you're going to? Just allow God to lead the path. And I say that from experience because I have not always done things perfectly, but I have always strived to live my life according to the way that God would want me to do it. I never veered too far off course. I try to stay the course and the path that God has for my life. I do my best to pray and ask God for direction in the things that I do in regards to my, my personal life, my children, my even like vlogging now. I'm like, Lord, what do you want me to talk about today? What do you want me to share today? What do you want me to show today? How do you want me to speak to the people today? Because I'm supposed to be a good steward over everything that God has given me. If God has given me a platform, no matter how small it is, I need to use it for his glory. You know, if God has given me these children, I need to steward them the best way possible, which means I need to con I need to consult with him before I make decisions for my children. God has given me this marriage, so I need to pray over it. I need to cover it. I need to come to God and ask God. How should I interact with my husband? How should I use my words? Lord, should I say this? Should I should I wait? Should I just pray on it? How am I to love him? How does he need to be loved? How am I to nurture this relationship? How am I to take care of my home? You've given me this beautiful home. Why would I let it just be trashed? I need to take care of it. I need to clean it. I need to organize it. 
You know, the way that I live my life, I try to consider the things that God has given me and always be a good steward over it. I try not, I don't spend money frivolously. I plan for things. If I go on a vacation, it's because I plan for it. God has provided the funds. Everything else is taken care of that needs to be taken care of first. I'm always going to be responsible with the money that he has given me and be a good steward over the money that he has given me before I go and do the things that I desire to do. And I believe that's why our family has been blessed to do the things that we desire to do because we always give it back to God first. And we always take care of the things that he has given us first. We're not lapsing on our bills. We're not buying things that we can't afford. We're not just frivolously spending money every day because that would not be a good steward. That would not be being a good steward over what God has given us. So living your life according to God's will is not just reading your word and and then that's it. It's living it out, doing the things that he has called us to do and speaking to him daily, considering him in all things, you know? So like I said, that was just something that was on my heart today. And I encourage you to do the same, you know, just invite God into your daily living even as you're moving about on the freeway. My mom, I, and that's something I learned from my mom, she prays about everything. And God will really start speaking to you. When you start talking to him all day, he's going to start talking back. Because I know a lot of us have a hard time hearing from God or do I know it's you, Lord? Or, But when you think about if what you're hearing is in alignment with what his word, it's more than likely him. And we talked about that in a previous vlog, fine-tuning your ear to hear from God is so, 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 so important, especially when you're inviting him into your daily living. So I just wanted to encourage you guys with that word today. We are about to head to Party City. Tomorrow is Bryson's birthday. I'll talk a little bit about that after Party City, but um, yeah, we're about to go to Party City and get some balloons. And then I also want to get, I need some gift bags. I have all the stuff in the car to put in the gift bags, but I need to grab the gift bags. Then I have to go drop them off at the school and then I will come back. They don't have no Sesame Street. What in the world? Why don't they have Sesame Street? Here it is. I was about to say, why don't y'all have Sesame Street? This is, okay. We only got one pack of bags though. Oh my gosh. Why? One pack of eight bags and I need 14. <laughs> So I have to improvise because they don't have enough bags. So I'm just gonna get these red and blue bags and see if I can find some Sesame Street stickers. Cause you know, with little kids, you can't have, they all have to be the same. I can't have some Sesame Street bags and some regular bags. That's just not gonna work. So to improvise. I forgot I had a 30% off coupon. So I got the balloons and, um, these bags for $22 and the, I think the balloons is theirs themselves was like supposed to be $25 so I did pretty good and I'm gonna go to Dollar Tree to get the number five so we're in Dollar Tree and they have some cute little stuff in here look at these little hair clips they have the little headbands little get ready headband this is actually really cute I think I might get this or this one That is so cute. I also have that here. I got a lot of claw clips. These little velvet claw clips. So cute. I got powder brushes. The Dollar Tree by my house don't have all this stuff. They are fully stocked in here. Spray bottles. Oops. Spray bottles, these little towel scrunchies, so cute. I actually need some of these. Mm-hmm. I 
They got a whole pack of rubber bands. Very cute. Now this I've never seen in Dollar Tree. A hair pick. They got wave caps, bonnet. Time is flying by. So we got the balloons. I went to Party City and got the um, balloon cluster. But then I came over to Dollar Tree to get the number five because um, they're only $5 at Dollar Tree, including um, helium and all that. So we got our balloons, we loaded down. Now I think I'm just gonna go to my mom's house and um, stuff the bags because she lives closer to the school. So let's go do that. to the school and then I went to Duncan and got me one of those um chicken roasted red pepper wraps so delicious if you haven't tried it you need to try it it's so good yeah so I went and got that and then I just came back to the school because when I went to drop the bags off it was only 30 minutes left of school um and as I'm sitting here I see another parent walk into the school with a whole tray of cupcakes now I was told that cupcakes were not allowed so if this man walked back out of the school with no cupcakes, I got a bone to pick because I wanted to bring cupcakes. Um, but yeah, they only allow you to do um, little gift bags. So that's what I did. And I put like little hostess cupcakes in there. I showed you guys what was in the bags. Um, so yeah, that's the only way that they allow us to celebrate. So that's what I did, which is kind of like, I can't go in the classroom. I can't bring cupcakes. Um... So the only thing you can do is give gift bags to the other kids. Seems kind of backwards to me, but I just went ahead and did it. Um, and then I'm going to bring out the balloons when I go pick him up. Of course, I won't be able to show you guys because I can't hold the balloons and um, record and all that. Well, I'm probably going to record on my phone. I'll just record it on my phone and I'll insert a clip of me picking him up after this clip. But you guys, I can't believe my baby is going to be five tomorrow. If you guys are new to my channel and you don't know the history of Bryson, I'll just give you a quick little sum up of his journey. Um, so Bryson was born at 25 weeks. Yes, I was 25 weeks pregnant when I delivered him. Um, he was in the NICU for three and a half months. When he came home, he was still on oxygen. Um, he had to have two surgeries uh, within his first year of life. He had chronic lung disease. Like, so Bryson is my miracle baby. Like, he was born at one pound, 14 ounces. I literally could hold him in the palm of my hand. And I have a video. Um, I'll tag his birth story in this um, video um, in the cards. But, yeah, I did document um, my journey um, here on my channel. So, you got to go way back five years. But I did document my journey our journey with him so he has come a long way and then at three years old he was diagnosed with autism um so he has had quite the journey and we are clearly still on the journey but he is such an amazing kid um he is our little blessing and we are so grateful to have him um it was the scariest day of my life 
um, but beautiful. Um, but it was literally, it was the scariest day of my life. Like, <clears throat> I just remember, like, I won't go into the whole birth story, but it was very traumatic. I didn't have any complications with my pregnancy. Um, my water broke, my um, water just broke randomly and um, it was too late to stop the process. The hospital that I went to was terrible, zero stars. Um, they did not believe me when I was saying that the baby was coming. They thought they knew better than me knowing my body. And I delivered my own baby in a hallway. Yeah. So, yeah, they basically had me in the holding space um, at the hospital. You know, when you're pregnant, you go in, you say you have something going on. They go and check you in like this little room. I pretty much was there my entire labor because they kept saying, oh, we're going to give you some medicine to stop your labor. We're going to be transferring you to another hospital, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, can you please just check me one more time? When they checked me, I was 10 centimeters dilated. They were trying to move me to the other room to deliver the baby. And as they pushed me out into the hallway, I literally was telling them, he's coming out. He's coming out. They're like, it's okay, mom. We're going to get him out safely. Da, 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 da. I literally, he popped out. I lifted up the sheet and I said, he's on the bed. So he was literally laying there on the bed at one pound, 14 ounces, you guys. So they rushed us in there. This hospital does not have a proper NICU. So um, they put a bag over his face, um, a bag over his body, like a plastic bag over his body, put an oxygen mask on him. And I was just laying there like this. But when I finally heard that faint little cry, I just heard all as well. Because I, I didn't think he was going to make it, you guys. I The circumstances, the way everything happened, I was just like, cause they were like, you want to see him? I was like, no. I didn't want to look at him until I heard that little cry. When I heard this little cry, then I looked at him. I could finally cry myself. And I was just like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And yeah, it was a journey. It has been quite the journey, but now he's five years old and he's about to come out right now. So I'm going to go pick him up. Let me get the balloons out the car and I will talk to you guys once he's back. So we got the birthday boy. You say hi. I see you. He was not interested in the balloons when I picked them up. Say, so I just wanted to go home. Yay. Happy birthday to you. My mama. Yeah. I'm you ready to get out the car? Say yes. Yes, mama. Yeah, I, of course, you never get the reaction you're looking for, but you do it anyway. This is how it goes. So I'm going to take all these balloons out. Take him out. Daddy's coming to help. Yeah. You ready to get out? Today has felt like a marathon, but we are getting towards the end. It is 5.04 p.m. Um, I think I told you guys earlier, let me take this face track off. I think I told you guys earlier that um, Kenyon School has their fall festival this evening and I volunteered. <laughs> I volunteered uh, to help out with our second grade booth. I only have a 30 minute shift and um we talked about it with Kenyon to see if he was really wanting to come because we're going to the Sesame Street place tomorrow it is freezing out here um it's in the 50s this evening it's been in the 50s all day today and that's freezing for us in Southern California um so it's really cold we really don't want the kids to get sick because we're going out tomorrow it's going to be cold tomorrow so we just kind of asked him like, are you really wanting to go or are you okay with just going out tomorrow? And he was like, I don't, I don't care. I'm like, perfect. Um, so the boys decided to stay home. I'm just going to do my 30 minute shift. And then I need to run to some store. The closest stores we have are like Target, Ross, Marshalls, um, because I have a birthday party to go to on Sunday. And the dress that I ordered from Fashion Nova says that it's not going to come till Monday. So I need to find something to wear to this party on Sunday. So my shift here is from 530 to 6. 
So after I leave there, I'm gonna go see if I can find something to wear for Sunday, pick up dinner and go home. Um, my video is late this week, you guys. Um, it's just been like one of those weeks and then um, going to, I went to the Mariah Carey concert on, oh my God, light is so bright. Uh, we got last minute tickets to go to the Mariah Carey concert on Wednesday in Palm Desert, which is like, it's really an hour and, and like 20 minutes away from my house, but in traffic it's two hours. Um, so if you guys are watching this video, it was the concert was in the previous um, vlog. So make sure you go back and watch that. Um, but because I went to the concert, I wasn't able to finish editing the video on um, Wednesday night and today is and on thursday i finished it but it would not upload so all day i've been trying to get it to upload it looks like it's almost done like i said today is friday so i'm just gonna upload it like normally i like to upload i do like to upload at specific times um but since today is friday friday is not a bad upload day for me i always check my analytics to see like when the people that are following me are watching um and the time slots for thursday and friday are very similar so i can still post at six or seven and i will still have a good amount of viewers so it is friday you know people i know for me i like to catch up on my youtube videos on friday night because i don't really do anything friday night um Usually, if I go out, it's going to be on a Saturday or, or a Sunday. Um, so, that's just me. So, I'm probably going to still upload the video on Friday. Because I was thinking, like, should I just wait till Sunday? But then, I don't I don't know. So, I'm going to upload it today. Um, actually, it's already uploading right now. It's just not done yet. So, like I said, it's 5.08. So, hopefully, it is done before 6 o'clock. So, I can upload it at 6. Yeah, it says 10 minutes left to check. I could upload it at 5.30. So I like to either do on the hour, on the half hour um, to upload. And I already did my thumbnail. So in all of the descriptions and everything are in there and ready to go. I'm actually about to add the thumbnail. I'm not too hot about the thumbnail, but child, it is what it is at this point. It's not terrible. I'm sure you guys. So it's cool. Sometimes I forget to take like pictures and I just end up with what I end up with. So yeah, that's done. I'm just gonna set an alarm to make sure because on YouTube Studio, you can, um, of course you guys know that you can schedule your videos to go up, but you can't, you only can schedule it on the hour. You can't schedule it for like 5 30, which I probably should. I probably should just get. I'm gonna schedule it for six because it's a reason why they don't have it for the half hour. I feel like maybe that's not a good time, but I need to let it finish checking first. Anyway, I'm rambling because I am not gonna walk up in there until 5 25 because it is so cold outside, and um, the door is actually just open. I saw a lot of people standing at the gate. I did park a little bit far, so maybe I'll get out the car at 5 20 because I have to find the booth. but Yes, today has been cool. Um, like I said, we're kind of doing like a pre-birthday celebration for Bryson. Tomorrow is his actual birthday. So I'm excited for that. Um, they are going to go get up and get a haircut in the morning. And then we're going to head out to San Diego. So I'll be taking you guys along for our special day for Bryson's birthday tomorrow. It's supposed to be cold, but I hope that it is not unbearable so that we can kind of make it through. Um, so we shall see, but yeah, I will probably see you guys tomorrow. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna still see y'all tonight because I, like I said, I have to go to the festival and then I have to go find something to wear. So, and I want to start editing this video tonight because as you guys can see, it's hard. The things that throw me off is when I be trying to be social. Okay. Because I get, gather all this footage, but then I, there's no time to edit it because I'm always doing something like, girl, sit down. So we're going to be out all day tomorrow and then Sunday we're going to be out all day and then I'm supposed to upload on Monday. So I need to edit it a little bit every night of footage that I already have so that I'm not trying to edit the whole vlog in one night. And that's what I need to start doing. I like tonight. 
as I'm like sitting down chilling, I'm gonna start editing this footage that I got today so that I can kind of like narrow it down. So yeah. All right, I see y'all in a little So whenever I volunteer, I usually stay around and help out extra. But y'all, it was 51 degrees. What is this on my face? It was 51 degrees outside. I did my 30 minutes and I dipped. It's cold. Um, so I'm at Marshall's. I'm about to see what they have, child. Let's pray I can find a dress and be out of here because I'm starving. Um, let's go. I don't think I have an ugly Christmas sweater party to go to, but this is a cute ugly sweater. It is so cute. I love it. That is so cute. I should just get one. I don't think I have a party to go to. This one is hilarious. Let's see. I like the green one better than the black one. That is hilarious. Yeah, I like this one better. I don't know if it's going to fit cute though. I'm going to get it. This is a really nice bag. $60. With men and women, because we operate so differently and our, our brains work so differently, it's really hard to comprehend if you're trying to break down every little thing. Like, if you respect your person, you respect their role, and you honor them, then, and don't focus on like the small little things or making it about me about what I do I do this, I do this, what do you do you're never going to get to a place to where you are having that mutual respect for each other and, and what you provide for the relationship God assigned us differently on purpose and I feel like the couples who struggle with that, you have to get outside of yourself have, and then and then find other ways how can I how can I better serve like when you're serving you don't have time to be thinking about what somebody else is doing and I feel like in a relationship most of the time if you're if you're serving that other person eventually they're going to see and feel that and want to be the same yeah. or they should <laughs> yeah. but I think the source of it is like ultimately we want our family to win yeah. In order for our family to win, each of us independently have to be successful. We have to thrive. Yeah. So if you're serving your spouse, you're looking at what can I do to make sure that they're thriving, that they win. Yeah. So it's doing those things that you notice that, okay, well, I think you need support here. Or even if they if they haven't told you that they need support and it's something that you see, yeah. then you actually do it. And it's not something that has to be done begrudgingly. But yeah. You literally do it because the ultimate goal is you want to see everybody be successful. Right. And it starts with the husband and the wife. Yeah. Like if we ain't up to par, then how do we expect everybody else in the family to be up to a certain standard? Right. It's so true. It trickles down for everything because if you're not on the same page, you don't want to do family stuff or yeah. you know the kids don't get to see that love between the two of you because you always be fan or yeah. you're not giving that same affection towards each other and you know you don't want your kids to grow up thinking it's normal for mommy and daddy to not interact with each other right or it's normal for them to walk past each other and not say anything like no that's not healthy right. but yeah as long as the um the husband and wife are basically doing what they're what they need to do within each other it it serves the overall health of the family yeah, I agree too. and i think too with men a lot of the time when you hear sacrifice it's defined a certain way mm -hmm. but it's 
so much more to that word. It is in so many pockets that involve the family. So yes, yeah, sometimes it's financial sacrifice. Sometimes it's emotional sacrifice, mm -hmm. you know? Like you may be dealing with your own stuff, but it doesn't take away from your responsibilities that you are having to fulfill for your family. Right. And it's not saying that you should be depressed and bottle it all up and not deal with those things, but sometimes you have to compartmentalize it to be able to still fulfill your role. Right, right. Yeah, I think that's true too because a lot of times, I think one thing that's important too within a relationship is to have that space to communicate with your partner yeah. when you are going through those times. And because um, sometimes with, I think sometimes with men too, because you guys are, have that role of like being the, the father, the leader, the, you know, strong, all that, you're not going to always share. Yeah. But I think it's important as wives to like provide that space and where they can be vulnerable, where you guys can be vulnerable and like be open to talk to us and vice versa. I think within the relationship, it should always be an open line of communications where if you are having a hard day or you are going through something, like you can talk to each other about it so that you don't have to go through that alone. I, sometimes you feel like in your role as a man, like you, you can't or you're not supposed to because you don't want to be weak or whatever. But I think long term, it's healthier to be able to share that. And I feel like for us over the last 10 years, we've been able to establish that. And one thing I always appreciated about you is like you would pull certain things out of me. Like, because it's the same thing for women. Like men, they try to hold themselves together. I think a lot of times for women, we don't want to completely fall apart. So sometimes like we won't talk about stuff because we're not trying to open up the floodgates. Because, you know, we both equally deal with so much in different ways that sometimes it's like you just push to the side, you don't even want to deal with it because you don't have time for that. But um, I always appreciated the fact that like we kind of like pull that out of each other. Yeah. So if we kind of just, because sometimes you just be an autopilot and you just keep it moving. You don't take, take the time to stop and deal with whatever, you know, because life keeps happening. You know, we just kind of move forward. We'll deal with it in the moment and then we'll move forward. But you need those times to like check in and like, are you okay? Is everything okay? Like I've noticed your attitude has shifted, like, and not taking everything personal because a lot of times if someone's attitude shifts in the house we automatically take a person and be like dang what i do to you but that's not always the case like it could be something that they're dealing with internally and um i feel like something that we do is we don't automatically take it personal anymore yeah. we all it took us a while to get there it took us a while to get there because naturally if you're the only two adults in the house and somebody walking around just <sighs> you you think like it gotta be about me like what's going on but that's not always the case. And I think for us, we started communicating like, listen, this happened today, or I'm dealing with this right now. I just need a little time to myself. Or if, I, if I'm a little more quiet or whatever, it's because of this. And that's something that I had to do as well, because y'all know we have that time of the month. And sometimes I don't know when it's coming. And my attitude, everything will just shift. And as women, we know we don't, like it when a man points that out and be like, is it that time of the month? <laughs> so instead of him having to like guess or wonder or whatever, I'd be like, listen, I ain't feeling it right now. Like I need a couple of days or I need a moment or whatever. Or it don't even be the time of the month. It's just I'm tired today. Like the kids really wore me out. So if my mood is a little down, it's because of that. It's not because of anything that you have done. And then did that like ease your mind or whatever? It, it did. It definitely does help. Um, I think too, the pandemic helped us to kind of start getting there to communicate things more freely. Yeah. Because during that time, so many emotions was going through and it was really hard to not know like if there was something that one another did to impact each other. Right. If it was just the, the state of the world at that time. Right. And we were going through so much at that time because yeah. at the same time, this was when Bryson had just got home from the hospital. We got, he was still on oxygen. We got hit with the pandemic. We were still going back and forth to the hospital with him. It was so much going on. Yeah. And so 
that was a time where a lot of couples either they broke up or they got stronger. Right. Thank God we were got stronger yeah. because we spent every waking moment together. <laughs> yeah. And we really had to depend on each other because we were dealing with two major life changes that we had never seen before. We didn't know what to do. This was out of our scope. We had, you know, we're, we're one thing that I always appreciate about our relationship is that we learned so much together. Like when we became parents, we literally did everything equally. The only thing he didn't do that I did was breastfeed. <laughs> like literally, he did everything that I did as a parent. And so, and he was there with me every step of the way, even through my breastfeeding journey. Like he was there with me, like struggling with me, like trying to help me look up recipes, like, you know, what you need? You want some of the morning milky cookies? Like what you need? Like, you know, and always supporting me. And I think that that was something that kind of built us in our relationship in the early stages because we went through everything together i never had to feel like i was by myself and vice versa when he was transitioning from corporate america to starting his own business i try to support him even though i don't know about hr i do now a little bit but i try to support him through everything that he's going through even if it's things that i don't understand i will sit with him in the office i will listen to things I, he can bounce ideas off of me i get my input and opinion and he considers it like i didn't feel like i was not any less valuable to him or anything and so i think that when you're really wanting to build a firm foundation in your relationship you let your partner in fully there's nothing that's off limits there's nothing that is untouchable in your relationship and you should be able to share and talk about anything like this is a rare very impromptu conversation that we were having in the car and i know i just kind of like turned the camera on because we were uh talking i'm like this is good we should be recording this so i kind of li literally just turned the camera on but we were watching a clip on instagram and he was talking about um being and as a husband and how when you go when you walk down that aisle, aisle and you go to the altar, you die that day. You die to yourself that day. And a lot of times, um, men feel like they're sacrificing more in the marriage if they are the breadwinner or, you know, whatever. They feel like their sacrifice is greater than the wives. And what he was explaining is, you know, when you go to that altar, you die. You are literally there to serve. Like, God placed you as a head for a reason. It is, the you know, it is a sacrifice, but your sacrifice is no greater than hers. She goes to that altar, she died to herself too. But God called us to each other, and we become in one that day. And so it's no longer just about you and what you did. It, it shouldn't be no tit for tat. And if you have that in your relationship, you're always going to bump heads. But when you value your partner just as much as the things that you do, it's cool like you know i i don't feel like what i do is just different it's no greater we we need both of us for this to work so yeah we just give y'all a little peek into the conversations that we have all the time <laughs> so yeah we hope that bless you guys think i should say that yeah i know y'all don't see much of him but he's always there <laughs> So yeah, we are on our way to San Diego for Bryce's birthday. We're going to the Sesame Street place. And we're actually almost there, like 38 more minutes on the road. The kids are asleep. Uh, Bryce woke up pretty early this morning. I'm going to tell him wake up. Like seven. Yeah, he woke up at seven. But the car ride is smooth. Um, so they're asleep, so they'll be rested up when we get there. And yeah, we're going to enjoy the day. Is the park closes at six, so before it gets too dark and too cold, we should be out of here. Um, Wait, the park closes at one? At six p.m. Well, we have plenty of time to enjoy ourselves. 
um, the from the parking lot, it doesn't look like it's gonna be too packed. Um, so yeah, we're excited. Bryson's getting all strapped in. He woke up from his nap. Kendon woke up from his nap. They're both rejuvenated and ready to party. Let's go. Right. Kendon said he's stretching for the rides. Yeah, look, I'm stretching for the rides. <laughs> Good job. We are all stretched out. I guess I should stretch too. Yeah, you're going on a ride too, Mom. Ooh. Oh! Baby, just do it for you. When he's finished, does he step back in and do you? I just gotta know. Cause your time is money and I'm going to get him wasted. Place understood the assignment with the margaritas for the parents. Cheers. I never had a margarita this tangy in my life. Cheers, babe. Bumping me. Stop. Say hi. Uh uh. I'm not bumping you with my with my oh. Okay, let's see how Sesame Street plays Shiro compares to Disneyland. Cheers. It's the right texture, it's not too crunchy. It's not Disneyland, but it's decent. Not bad at all. We ain't gonna give it to you. We can't wait. We can't go We can go We can't. Who wants to sit on top of Pippi Master and take a picture? Thank you. 
Sunday. It is the next day after Bryson's birthday. We had a great time at Sesame Street Place. Um, I will say we have to go back during the summer because um, the main part of the park is a water park. So we were only able to um, do maybe like six rides because everything else is like a water experience. But we got to do the ride several times. The lines weren't long at all. So we had a great time. The kids had a ball. After Bryson warmed up, he had a really good time. Um, today is Sunday. We went to church and now we are about to go to my friend's 40th birthday party. So I'm going to go ahead and close off the vlog here. I may um, insert a couple of clips from the party. But yes, thank you guys so much for watching this vlog. I know we did a lot of different things during this vlog. <laughs> conversations experiences different things so i hope you guys enjoyed it all this is a you know our weeks change things happen differently during our week so this week a lot of different things that really don't go together happen um but i just shared it all with you guys so hopefully you guys enjoyed it don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one bye <laughs>